Um, now, one of the things that a lot of people will be doing over Christmas, uh, sorry, over New Year as well, is drinking. Um, I don't know why, but if you've got four days, it means that that's four days to recover. So you can drink Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. I'm not going to work on Monday. Oh, this is going out quite well, really. Uh, and New Zealand does have a drinking problem. Um, aided and abetted, I might add, by governments of the day. Uh, one of the worst things that ever happened to this country in my lifetime was the easier accessibility of liquor. Um, this is not to say that my parents and grandparents didn't drink like fish, but they drank lesser strength alcohol, particularly when it came to beer. Draft beer was 3%. It wasn't 6, 7, 8, 9 as it is now. Um, they also uh, didn't have as many liquor outlets. Uh, they were confined to certain times of the week in which you could buy alcohol. For example, you couldn't buy it on a Sunday. Uh, and in addition to which, um, there weren't RTDs, uh, ready to drinks, uh, which was, you know, at the end of the day, a pretty evil intervention into the liquor space because what it did was it targeted particularly adolescent school children uh, and gave them something sweet in a 5 6 7% can. And the result of all that is that New Zealand really does have a drinking problem, and we know it, and we're very honest about it. We don't do anything about it, but we just know we have. And we're sort of like, mm, we are addicted to alcohol, and we know we're addicted to alcohol, and we'll sit there and go, tut, 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 tut. Uh, but we won't do anything about it. And six of governments now have fluffed and flunked around any form of liquor reform to this country, oh God, since I've been in, in the public life. Um, well, just recently, the New Zealand Alcoholic Beverages Council um, have released uh, their uh, annual survey on New Zealand attitudes on alcohol. And the chief executive of the New Zealand Alcoholic Beverages Council, Virginia Nichols, joins us now. Uh, Virginia, welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Good, good morning, Michael. Um, I'm pretty much right, aren't I? We know we've got a liquor problem. Oh. We just don't have the will to do anything about it. I think we need to have a look at a, a little bit of data here, actually, Michael, as well. I mean, the way in which New Zealanders drink um, is under, under um, going a huge cultural shift, really. Since the late 1970s, we're all drinking more than 25% less than what we used to drink. So I don't quite agree with you on that one. And, and something else. Sorry, what did you say? We're drinking. Well did you say we're drinking twenty five percent? Did you say we're drinking twenty five percent less? More, more than twenty five percent less than we did in the late nineteen seventies. So there's been a huge cultural shift in how we're drinking and what we're drinking. There's no doubt about that. Do we have a way to go? Yes, we do. Uh, but we're not. And RTDs killed us. I mean, the, I don't know if the Alcoholic Beverages Council was around and when RTDs were introduced to this country in the late 80s and early 90s, were, were you, as an organisation? No, 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 we're relatively recent, yeah. And I can't so imagine we you around. accepting that they could come off the marketplace. Um, well, RTDs are just another option, really. I mean, New Zealanders decide what they want to drink. The fact that we're drinking less is a really good thing. The fact that our young people are also drinking less is also a good thing. There is a change there, which is really good. And I think, I think we should acknowledge that. It's particularly important. You have a, a look at the New Zealand Youth 2000 survey. We've got an increasing proportion of secondary school students that are choosing not to drink. And so, for instance, and this is, this is government data, if you like, or independent data. It comes from um, uh, different researchers. But in 2007, our young people, 26% of them, we're choosing not to drink now in 2019 it's 45% so we've got we've, we've got um, some good improvements i think there yeah so what um i'm i'm a bit interested because you sound like an apologist for the liquor industry to me um oh. you're funded that i mean are you or because i, I i'm that is not my experience and i've got teenage children now admittedly that evidence would be yeah. anecdotal you've taken a survey but my experience is that teenagers are drinking and have been drinking much younger than they're allowed to. So they're now drinking at 15, 16. They're going to parties, um, often without, you know, parental knowledge or consent, and that they're drinking RTDs at quite a proportion. 
Um, is that not your experience of teenage children these days? You're like that half of them uh, no, don't drink not. at all. It's not. Um, that, that is correct. So this is independent data from the New Zealand Youth 2000 survey. So this is, as I say, researchers are putting out this data, but also I think it's important to know um, as well that there's been a reduction in youth drinking. It's a phenomenon that's around the world as well as New Zealand too. And it certainly wasn't predicted, and it's a really good thing. There's some real change going on there in households, which I think are to do with families. I think they're to do with siblings and probably the peer pressure as well. I think it's an important probably, change. You don't think it's to do also, uh, possibly, because one thing I have noticed is that they take very seriously that age group, the um, sober driver. Um, yes. And the zero... You see, I, I wonder if there's not a correlation between the under 20, you've got to have zero alcohol in your breath or you lose your licence and, and potentially, you know, even yep. worse consequences. That piece of legislation yes. itself, I would suggest to you, was quite informative, yes? Yeah, I think that's really good legislation and I think that's a really good thing that particularly new and young drivers, if you like, um, shouldn't have alcohol in their system at all. I think that's a really important thing. Okay. The other end of this, though, I'm now reading, and you've probably seen it as well, the latest study published in the New York Times a couple of days ago that says that moderate drinking has no health benefits at all. Um, a review found that the methodology of, methodology of many previous studies was flawed and that risk of myriad health problems increased significantly after less than two days a drink, two drinks a day for women and after three for men. Um, you've come across that piece of research? I haven't seen that piece of research, I'm sorry, but certainly I know in New Zealand, again, this is um, Health New Zealand data, is women should drink um, or to low to moderate drinking, which is what we promote as well, responsible drinking. We should only drink 10 standard drinks a week and blokes should have 15 standard drinks and we have two days off. So no more than two standard drinks a day for women and no more than three standard drinks a day for men. And that's a really important message and it's also an important message for our young people as well. And as, you, as you've probably seen, the, the industry does support a program in schools, really. It's, it's the Tomorrow Project, which is a social change charity. It's governed by Spirits NZ, wine growers and also the Brewers Association. And it's about SMASH, which is a theatre and education program that includes an interactive workshop for 12 and 13 year olds where they can learn all about all sorts of important things about like what is a standard drink, counting those drinks and talking about safe drinking, binge drinking, you know, peer pressure, you know, good decision making. And also to the availability of the low and no alcohol products as well, which are really good out there and I think they're also changing the way the whole lot of us are drinking too. Well, um, the, the other key part about this um, New York Times published study was that they suggested that there are no health benefits to drinking alcohol. Um, we've all heard that sort of idea that red wine improves your health, that saying, no, it's just bunkum. It doesn't. Um, would, is, is it, so, in other words, moderate drinkers are not better off in terms of health terms than abstainers. Does the um, Alcoholic Beverage Council accept that too? There's different research out there and you read different things, but it's like anything in this life, Michael. I mean, we all want to have a bit of a balance with what we're doing, a balance with the different, you know, variety of diet, do a little bit of exercise, you know, balance how much we're drinking. And I think that's what it's about. And um, certainly there's different research to that as well. And, and that's what you find in this environment too. Um, is there? Because um, this is a meta-analysis of all the surveys that are out there. Can I, uh, seriously, it's, it's, um, it's just been published. It's in the New York Times. It's difficult, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'll let you, yeah, sorry, it's okay. It's all right, you haven't read it. So I'll let you go and yeah. find that for yourself. It's yeah. come out in the last 24, uh, out in the last 24 hours. In fact, when I, I saw right. your press release from yesterday, the first thing I went, and I love it was just here in the New York Times has published this meta-analysis of, of all the surveys over the last 40 years, suggesting there are no benefits, health benefits, to moderate alcohol consumption. Um, but New Zealand does have a drinking problem. I've, uh, in the last month, we've heard that uh, there is particularly a problem amongst my age group, baby boomers, who do seem to be drinking more and becoming... We also know the linkage between alcohol 
and um, consumption and domestic abuse. Uh, the police have warned about that. Um, we're also hearing in smaller co communities, particularly those affected by alcohol and in poorer communities, the proliferation of liquor outlets. Um, does the Beverages Council have views on that? Well, I think I think there's a couple of things here, really. And there's one thing, and again, this is um, the health, the New Zealand Annual Health Survey. So these are important sort of surveys that happen once a year. And what the survey tells us is that 81% of New Zealand adults are drinking in a responsible way which is a good thing, and that is increasing. So that's a really good thing, less hazardous drinkers. Now, we've still got 19% of people that drink in a hazardous way, and that is, that is still too many. But there's another thing that I do want to correct there as well, is that you talk about the fact that, you know, liquor outlets are increasing. They're actually not. Um, they've actually declined by 23% since 2010. So they're not increasing, and that's across both retail situations and also, you know, restaurants and things like that. Where do you Again, live? That's, that's I, I, I'm sorry, I just, I, I just, where do you live? Because there is nothing I live, in my... I live very close to you, actually, and I, I live in Dunedin, and I know that Okay, you're well, I'm, target, I'm sorry, so but have you honestly areas. seen a decline in liquor outlets of 23% in Dunedin? I, I haven't. No, 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 this is, no, no I'm true. talking about New Zealand. So, so where you find this data, Michael, it's on the ARLA website. So again, this is a government-based website, and that's where you find the data. Again, government data. Do, do they mean? And, do they yeah. mean that's a twenty-three percent decline in restaurants? But it's sure as hell. Is is? No, no. I, like a, you mean liquor so outlets, as in both. super liquor man and stuff like that? That are, there, there's yep, been a. Across, a so beer, wine and spirits are sold, as you know, you get it in a retail situation, you get it, for instance, in restaurants and cafes, anyone who's got a liquor licence. And ARLA is an independent organisation oh, so that it's has a, test a of, those. of so all the different licences. Yeah, right. across so, all of those, so it's, yes. Right, so when you talk about liquor outlets, you're not actually talking about necessarily retail, uh, the, the, sort of like the super liquor man, or the Henry's, or the supermarkets. Um, you're talking about also, cafes and restaurants and bars, things yes. like that. When you talk about yes. liquor outlets, wherever oh, wherever okay. we can right. we, wherever we can buy um, beer, wine, and spirits in New Zealand of retailers, okay. it's about eight percent of all of those. Like pubs and taverns and things like that. Yes, but that, 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 uh, yes, but you're, you're drawing a bow there, aren't you? Because you're saying there's been a decline to try and argue my point that the is a problem, and it's been identified by community leaders in the last five years. The proliferation of liquor outlets in poor areas, and you're saying, oh no, that's not right because there's been a 25 percent decline in outlets. Yes, but we're talking about pubs and cafes and restaurants. We're not talking about those defined retail liquor outlets like the super liquor mans and the low cost um, that are aimed at poor communities like South Dunedin and your Nick Woods or um, South Auckland. Um, those those, those but, are the ones that community even, leaders have problems. But Michael, you'll have to acknowledge yourself here in Dunedin and I'm sure you hear a little but there are less outlets now, for instance, pubs and things like that in Dunedin and that's been going on for a number of years. Yes, and that's because the cheap liquor places. places are there. I mean, I go down the main street of Dunedin now and I see your cheap liquor outlets, run by largely Indian folk, I have to say, um, who are parading those things down what used to be a retail area. And there's a reason why the pubs are finding it difficult, is because, as you know, with 20,000 students, they go and load up, they buy all that cheap liquor from those liquor outlets that are now freely available in their area. Because it's cheaper, they get completely drunk, they trash North Dunedin, and... Yeah, right. They don't go to the pub anymore and pay $10 for a shot or to, you know, the Guardi's Tavern or something like that. What I'm trying to say to you is that um, the number of liquor outlets that sell cheap liquor has proliferated, and surely you must acknowledge that. No, we don't acknowledge that because the numbers don't support what you were saying at all. I mean, yes, again, they I do. go back, we are, all of us as a community, again, government funds, government numbers, more than 25% of us across New Zealand are drinking considerably less than when we did in the late 70s. This is a cultural change. We know that the young people are drinking considerably less than what they did again these are independent figures. These are good things. Is it enough? No, it's not. 
but it's a it's a beginning and that's where some of the educational programs are really really important in schools to actually talk to students and and give them all the facts and how they can handle this because that's really really important that we do that we do that as a family and things as well and we openly talk about it but there is nothing wrong with going and enjoying you know a very nice something that you enjoy a craft beer or a nice glass of wine whatever you enjoy and having a glass of wine on a day nothing wrong with that um, and what we found is, is the poll in Kerry and Market Research um, has found that 56% of us as well in the last year, we, we actually had a, a low alcohol or a no alcohol beverage. These are really good changes that are happening out there. Again, we still yeah, think we need yeah. to do more. But, you know, you, these, you, these you're are, actually, are you really come from a city. Things. Yeah, but you come from a city, Virginia, where... Um, there wouldn't be a month go by where there isn't alcohol harm demonstrated magnificently on the front page of your newspaper, particularly with your university students and your precious University of Otago. Now, come on. Yes, yeah. You cannot tell me we're, that their behaviour has improved since the 1970s. I, I definitely think the behaviour of students has improved. I think there are different students coming through. There are a lot more students coming through too that actually don't drink alcohol. These are all really good things. I mean, we're very yes, but proud it's the ones of the that do. Here. But it's the ones that do. Yeah, oh, listen, and ro- falsely so, because your university is dropping like a, a brick in terms of international rankings. But And one of the reasons for that is because Otago University has acquired such a reputation for its drinking culture over the last 20, 30 years and still has that drinking culture, Virginia, that... It's, it's actively dissuading students from going. And students now, if they I, want... I think... Yeah? Yeah, I think you'll find that the University of Otago has very good international rankings. And I think it, there are also changes going on here too with the students that are coming. 80% of our students, as you probably know, come from out of our area. And the behaviours and things, yes, there are issues, but equally too, there are some incredible outputs as a result of these students coming to the University of Otago. It's, um, it's a very good university, along, to be fair, with the other seven universities in New Zealand. Um, seriously, you should go and see some stats. Otago University has been declining in international reputation over the last, dec- uh, last generation. We've only got one university in the top I, I don't, I don't world, actually, um, I and that's don't Auckland. agree with that. I, well, that's right. Well, no, that's so you'll Auckland only listen university. to those stats that you the want. The University of Otago. I don't agree with you, Michael. The University of Otago has become a really bad university. It's been declining in international levels. Australia's got eight universities in the top 100 in the world. We don't have one. We've only got one in the top 200, and that's Auckland. Now, go and look at the Times Literary Supplements. Go and look at any international university rankings you want to see. And I would suggest to you that one of those reasons is because the drinking culture of Otago University is... And it's known throughout, unfortunately, New Zealand for it. The high street parties, the, the St. Patrick's Day shenanigans, the orientation excesses. I mean, and you're trying to tell me that there's responsible drinking and there's been attitude changes. These are meant to be our best and brightest students in New Zealand. And Otago University each year portrays the effects of alcohol harm and overindulgence. It doesn't seem to be working but to me. There are also, but, Michael, there are also changes that are happening um, in in society as a whole and we're seeing that locally here at the University of Otago and we're pretty proud of that. So do we have a way to go? Yes, we do. But I think we do need to acknowledge as well, with independent figures as well, that there is a change, but what can we do? What we need to be looking at here and saying is, what more can we do? How can we improve this data even a little bit further? Um, And Is there any country that you look at and go, they've got the model? Not really. I mean, we in the OECD, um, you know, we're better than the average, if you like, in the OECD. Everybody has different issues and things, but equally there's nothing wrong, you know, with enjoying, as I say, a, a, a beer or a, or a glass of wine. It, there's actually nothing wrong with it. It's just about the fact that we want to get more responsible drinkers. Um, as I say, 81% of us and nearly four, more than four out of five of us are drinking in a responsible way. We want to reduce the hazardous drinking and part of that is just top of the cliff stuff 
more, we need to do more in schools, more education, more discussion about this as a society. And we also need more programs to help people that are struggling with alcohol as well. Can I just quote to you um, some statistics from Alcohol Org NZ? Um, I think they've been set up by the government. They look at the same stats, no doubt, that you do. And they agree with you that alcohol consumption for beer has certainly decreased. But over the last 10 years, they suggest for spirits, there's been a 35% increase. For spirit-based drinks, 22%. And wine, 7%. Consume 10.7 litres of pure alcohol per person. And this is similar to Australia, lower than the UK, but higher than the United States and Canada. Are you suggesting that those stats aren't valid? What, what I'm suggesting is that we all, I mean, we're all, we're all uh, many people, many, we're all adults here and we get to pick what we actually want to drink. There's nothing wrong with that again. If we want to have, you know, a, a spirit or something like that, or if, if we want to have a nice cocktail or a, a craft beer, I, I don't see what's wrong with that. What's important here is that we actually look at how many standard drinks that we're having. And that's the important thing. And we actually count them and say, right, we're at two standard drinks if we're a woman. We're at three standard drinks if we're a man. And we need to stop because that, that's what's really important. Again, moderation and balance, I think, is important across our entire um, lifestyle. All right. OK. Thank you very much for joining us, Victor uh, okay. Virginia. Thank that you, is uh, Virginia okay. Nichols, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Alcoholic Beverages Council.